everyone, I'm Edwin Bauzon, your discussant for today. So after this lesson, readers or viewers are expected to comprehend the definition and role of general agreement on tariffs and trade, to understand how GATT was formed, to know the eight rounds of GATT, to determine the objectives of GATT, and discern the fundamental principles of GATT. So these are the definition of terms. Agreement, a plan or decision about what to do made by two or more people, groups, or organizations. Tariff, a tax or duty imposed by one country on the goods and services imported from another country. Trade, the act or process of buying, selling, or exchanging goods or services between people, firms, or countries. Quota, is the share or proportional part of a total that is required from or belongs to a particular district, state, person, or group. Subsidies, a direct payment made by a government to a company in an other organization as a form of assistance. According to Pitt, in 2003, global trade and finance was greatly affected by the Bretton Woods system. One of the systems born out of Bretton Woods was the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade that was established in 1947. GATT is a set of multilateral trade agreements aimed at the abolition of quotas and the reduction of tariff duties among the contracting nations. General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade is a legal agreement between many countries. It was signed on October 30, 1947 by 23 founding countries and went into effect on January 1, 1948. GATT focused on trade goods through multinational trade agreements conducted in many rounds of negotiation. It held eight rounds in total from April 1947 to December 1993. It was out of the Uruguay round con concluded in 1986 to 1993 that an agreement was reached to create the World Trade Organization or WTO. So, the GATT was created to boost economic recovery after the Second World War by reducing or eliminating trade tariffs, quotas, and subsidies while preserving significant regulations. To be clear, GATT was not a formal organization. It had no headquarters, no permanent staff, or any other kinds of morcos normally associate with international organization. Rather, It is an umbrella agreement to government international trade talks. So, let us know how GATT was formed. The GATT was first conceived in the aftermath of the Allied victory in the Second World War at the 1947 United Nations Conference on Trade and Employment, at which the International Trade Organization, or ITO, was one of the ideas proposed. It was hoped that the ITO would run alongside the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. More than 50 nations negoci negotiated ITO and organizing its founding charter, but after the withdrawal of the United States, these negotiations collapsed. The GATT, as the only multilateral institution dealing with the trade issues, became the actual form for countries to discuss trade disputes and to negotiate multilateral agreements. As a result, membership in GATT quickly expanded from the original 23 countries in 1947 to 128 in 1994. The GATT played an important role in the Cold War which began shortly after the Second World War. It helped the United States led capitalist West spread its influence by liberalizing trade through multilateral agreements. The GATT was comprised of eight successive rounds of trade talks which successfully liberalized international trade. The first round was the Geneva which happened in 1947. In this round, they agreed to reduce more than 45,000 in bilateral tariffs covering 20% of world trade. The second round was the Annecy round that happened in 1949, in which they reduced 5,000 in bilateral tariffs. Next was the Turkuwai Rand, that was happened around 1950 to 1951. It was the reduction in bilateral tariffs 
covering a new range of goods. Then, the Geneva Two Round in 1956, it was the reductions in bilateral tariffs. The fifth round was the Billion Round, which happened in 1960 to 1961. They reduced bilateral tariffs and the European Economic Community or EEC talks began. Then, the Kennedy Round in 1964 to 1967. In this round, they continued the reduction in bilateral tariffs and established negotiation rules. Then, the Tokyo Round, which happened among 1973 to 1979. Again, they continued to reduce bilateral tariffs. This also includes the procedures on dispute resolution, dumping, and licensing. The Tokyo Round took the first step in establishing common understanding and policy framework to address non-tariff barriers among GATT signatories. And the final round in the most complex round of GATT was Uruguay Round, conducted in 1986 to 1994. This round involved a 128 countries and focused on wide variety of issues beyond reducing tariffs. It addresses intellectual property rights, agricultural subsidy, the non-tariff barriers, trades, and services, and establish a dispute settlement mechanism to resolve trade dispute and prevent trade wars. But the most significant outcomes of Uruguay Rwand was the agreement to establish the World Trade Organization or the WTO. So these are the purpose of general agreement on tariffs in trade. First, to provide equal opportunities to all countries in terms of trade in international market. Second, to increase effective demand for real income growth goods. Third, to minimize tariffs and other restrictions on trade. Fourth, to provide amicable solutions to disputes related to international trade. Fifth, to ensure better living standard. And lastly, to strengthen and clarify rules for agricultural trade. These are the basic principles of GATT. First, most favored nation treatment or non-discrimination. It states that each contracting party to the GATT is required to provide to all other contracting parties the same conditions of trade as the most favorable terms it extends to any one of them. Each contracting party is required to treat all contracting parties in the same way that it treats its most favored nation. The central principle of non-discrimination is to prevent protectionist measures and guarantee the freedom of trade among all member states. Reciprocity Each contracting party has a right to access to markets of other trading partners on MFN basis, in, and it has an obligation to reciprocate with trade concessions on MFN basis. In a way, this is closely associated with MFN principle. This is to say that a country which takes new steps towards liberalization granting trade advantages to another member state in turn reciprocally, equivalent privileges by the favored state. Next is transparency, the need to harmonize the system of import protection so that barriers or, or trade can be reduced through the process of negotiations. Domestic industries should be protected through custom tariffs. Restric restrictions on trade should be limited to the less rigid tariffs. And lastly, tariff binding and reduction. When GATT was established, tariffs were the main form of trade protect protection and negotiations in the early years focused primarily upon tariff binding and reduction. The text of the 1947 GATT lays out the obligation on, con on the contracting parties in this regard. They are intended to correct for unfair trade practices and un unexpected changes in trade patterns that are damaging to those industries that compete with imports. That's all. I hope you have learned something from my report. Thank you and God bless.